Hello friends, uh, in the previous lecture we discussed uh, so about microscope basically the whole optical system and we also discussed about the abrasions okay, in optics what are the abrasions which are there. Uh, today we want to discuss something more practical in the sense that how we are going to use the microscope how we are going to prepare the sample for uh, viewing in the microscope. So, this is more like a practical approach now to use the microscope. Okay, so, this is what we call as metallography or metallography practice that what we have to do to ultimately see a microstructure. So, to start with uh, let us see how I am going to prepare a sample for weaving into a microscope for getting a microstructure okay and uh, for that first uh, we will uh, we do what we call as uh, a grinding process okay so initially the sample may be given to you in whatever form it is not up to you sometime you have to take sample from a bigger uh, some part okay so that may have a lot of uh, uh, undulations may be a different shape or it may have some curvature ok. So, first thing we have to do is to make it a, a flat sample ok using a very coarse abrasive particle which is what we have in grinding ok. So, the material removal rate is very high when you do grinding ok. So, the grinding process is basically we want to have a flat surface on which we will uh, later on do the remaining polishing pro uh, processes, we will apply remaining pol polishing processes ok. So, first is grinding ok using a grinding wheel, you have to be very careful because at that time you can introduce uh, some more uh, uh, problem in the surface also maybe you may create a curvature and all that. So, you have to have a very steady hand. Okay, and uh, you have to pay attention to the grinding process, do not talk to anybody while doing the grinding process. The next comes is because this is a very coarse uh, abrasive particles will be there in the grinding wheel. Uh, we start with the uh, next uh, polishing process using polishing papers. Okay, so, you will have a A4 size paper on which the grinding this abrasive particle will be pasted by some uh, adhesive. Okay, which you will get from the market okay, and then you start the uh, polishing okay, on this paper and that also first you start with a coarse abrasive particle and then you keep on going to finer particles. Okay. We will just see all these things in more details. The next step is by when you are doing polishing, so first you will start with a coarse paper. Okay. So, you suppose I am let us say this is my sample. I am doing a polishing in this direction, then I will rotate it by 90 degree, okay. take the next paper which is of a smaller abrasive particle size okay. and then again do the polishing. I will give the details in the uh, coming slides. Okay. So, we start with a coarse abrasive particle, first is grinding, then coarse uh, particles in the abrasive paper. Then we take a, another paper with a small, a smaller abrasive particle size okay. and this process can go depending upon what type of sample you have, what is your polishing uh, procedure you are applying, you can have multiple steps of this paper polishing. Okay. Then the step come which is uh, listed as fourth step here where we do po final polishing using a cloth. Okay. So, usually uh, these are velvet cloth or uh, also billiard uh, you must have seen this uh, cloth on the pool table or billiard table okay that kind of cloth okay which can hold the abrasive particle okay so then abrasive particle uh, very fine abrasive particle which are which is in suspension we po put on the cloth and again we do the polishing using the uh, this abrasive okay then the purpose of this uh, polishing okay using different uh, this different papers and then going to the cloth polishing is to get finally a mirror like finish in this on the sample okay or this is also we call as optically flat sample okay so uh, I, I would also uh, uh, like you to go back to the previous lecture where we talked about this optical system and we talked about a term called depth of field 
okay and there was a relationship okay for the depth of field okay if you put all the values okay in that particular equation you will see that the depth of field of a optical microscope is very small in microns basically okay so you can understand that if my sample the surface is not flat optically flat then it will not remain in focus okay so to make it make a sample such that the whole sample or the whole surface remain in focus of the optical microscope i have to prepare this optically flat sample okay so all this polishing technique ultimately the aim is to get a sample which is optically flat the meaning is that i have a very small depth of field of optical microscope okay so i have to reach a condition where my flatness is in that micron range okay this you may not be able, uh, may, may not be required in some other microscope for example scanning electron microscope okay and the next step is the etching to reveal different features and phases so once i get this optically flat sample okay now i want to introduce some Uh, so, some uh, roughness in the surface or some so, uh, some new features on the surface okay to start seeing the microstructure of the material okay so this is the uh, in nutshell the whole uh, uh, process of sample preparation okay now we will go, uh, look into detail each of these uh, steps okay grinding of course we will not see so step 2 and 3 where we use polishing using uh, abrasive papers okay basically what we do is we can use uh, normally or popularly people know this polishing paper by a name called emery paper they will just say that bring an emery paper so emery paper were uh, having abrasive particle as emery okay and emery is nothing but aluminum oxide and other naturally occurring naturally occurring minerals so whatever you can get minerals from nature okay so it is a combination of different abrasive particles or different chemical compositions okay so it is not a, a single type of abrasive particle and that, that is why you can understand that it is not a it won't have a homogeneous property okay so it different particle will have different hardness and different uh, capability of abrading the surface okay so initially these were very popular because emery paper was very cheap okay and their designation as you can see here is uh, what is called as 1020 30 and 40 so 10 is the coarse paper and 40 is the fine paper okay so like that you can go from coarse to fine nowadays of course most of the places you will see that we are using silicon carbide uh, papers okay so basically in this the abrasive particle is silicon carbide okay and the uh, the advantage is that you have a abrasive particle of similar hardness okay so you won't get different type of hardness the of course the adhesive which is now used is also of much better quality so you can also do polishing by you uh, in wet condition basically you can pour water on the abrasive paper and do the polishing okay the advantage is that it will minimize the heating of the sample okay so suppose heating may destroy some features or may alter some features of your sample okay that can be reduced if you use wet polishing and in this the grades are uh, given by some uh, designation is like this p100 p180 p320 you can go up to p2000 and for each grade the size of the abrasive particle is also given in the brackets so for example in p100 the particle size of the abrasive particle will be 162 micron around 160 micron basically uh, and you go up to final polishing it for p2000 the particle size will be 10 micron so you can now understand that as i told you depth of field is in that micron range we are reaching towards that range okay by doing this type of polishing okay so this is what you do in a, in a abrasive paper polishing okay and this is the polishing technique which you use okay as i told you i will tell you this thing in detail okay so suppose i take a polishing paper this is an example here given okay so first 
we will do on a course paper. So, we are first doing let us say on uh, P180 paper which has a 82 micron of uh, particle size. Okay. So, I will be doing polishing like this in a single motion okay, only in one direction. Okay. Care must be taken that we should not put too much pressure. Okay. The abrasive particle itself will abrade the surface. So, we do not have to put too much pressure here okay. and we have to do it in one direction okay, like this. So, that you get marks in one direction as is shown in this slide here okay, that all the marks are in one direction okay. and if you see from uh, if you see have a side view the, the, the ridges and the asperities will be something like this. It may not be that regular, but this is just a schematic to give you an idea that how the roughness will be there on the sample. Okay. Now, when we go to the next paper, which will be of course, having finer abrasive particle, let us say we are taking P320 here. Okay. So, now I will rotate my sample, which I was doing like this by 90 degree okay. and then I will again start polishing. Okay. The idea of 90 degree rotation is that we should be able to remove all the uh, roughness or scratches which we introduce in the previous paper to uh, so that we make sure that it is all removed. When you make a 90 degree, okay, I am I am sure that the earlier ones were removed because I will see a new direction of scratches. So if I am not able to see the see the earlier scratches, that means those are removed. Okay, if I do in the same direction, I won't be sure that the earlier ones were removed or not. Okay. So, progressively we want to have a scratches of finer smaller wavelength okay, and finer uh, this amplitude of the if you say it, it, it think of it as a sinusoidal wave a smaller amplitude. So, you can see I have turned the sample by 90 degree then I polished it on the P320. So, now my scratches are finer okay, the size is smaller the wavelength is smaller okay, and we can keep on going like this okay, up to let us say P2000. Okay. So, this is the paper polishing, uh, care must be taken if you do not do these steps religiously, you will not, you are not going to get a good microstructure later on. Okay. So, these steps are very important okay, so that each step should be followed religiously and you remove the damage layer which is introduced because of the polishing. You can understand we are abrading the surface, so it will also introduce a damaged layer okay, in the sample that has to be removed in the next paper, then that has to be removed in the next paper and so on. Okay. The final polishing is cloth polishing. Okay. So, that now the particle size, abrasive particle size is in even smaller, it is in sub micron size. Okay, you can get uh, again uh, of different particle size. Okay. So, different materials for example, seed steel samples if you are doing, okay, usually we use alumina which is in uh, suspension. Okay. So, you can use water to suspend it and it has a sub micron particle size okay, that you keep on pouring on the cloth and the uh, polishing wheel will be there which is rotating continuously. Okay, and your sample will encounter every time a new abrasive particle to abrade the surface. Th this is a slower process, my particle size, abrasive particle size is smaller okay, and that will make sure that you do not damage the surface of the sample. Okay. For aluminum samples for example, I may use a magnesia powder dissolved in a distilled water okay, to get a good surface finish. Okay. Nowadays, diamond paste is also very popular. Okay, we, you can use it in almost all type of samples. Okay, and you can get a very defined size of particle in the diamond paste. Okay, so it can be nine micron, three micron, one micron, less than one micron, 0.25 micron, and so on. Okay, so you again in this case also I can keep on going to finer particle size. Of course, you have to use different cloth for each of these uh, different particle size. Otherwise, if you use the same cloth, then it will get mixed. Okay. You will get scratches from 9 micron as well as 1 micron uh, if you are using these two. So, for each uh, diamond paste, you will use a different cloth. Okay. Com clean the, your uh, sample po polishing unit completely. 
okay, put the cloth, new cloth on a disc polisher. D disc polisher are basically disc on which you put the cloth and this disc rotate. Okay, so it is a kind of a semi-automatic polishing uh, technique. Okay, and that is how you uh, do the polishing. Okay, using cloth. Then once I have got a, a, a nice polished surface, okay, I have to now see the microstructure. Okay. To reveal the microstructure in the material, okay, the, the process which is there is called etching. Okay. So, etching what it does is it reacts with the different constituent of the material in a different way. Okay. So, there may be a grain boundary in the in your uh, sample, okay. there may be different phases in your sample. Okay. So, this etching or the etch end, okay, the, it reacts with this in a different way okay. and when it reacts with in this, uh, this constituent in different ways, it gives rise to some at, at micron range only. Uh, some undulation on the surface, okay. some, some variations will be there on the surface. Okay. Now, the microscope will kind of capture those variations okay. and by, by capturing those variation, it will be able to give you that what is there in the material, what is there at the micron scale. Okay. The, why we call this as microstructure? Because we are viewing the thing at micron scale, so that is why it is microstructure. Okay. For different uh, materials, again, there are actually if you uh, if you are interested, you can go to there are handbooks available for each material. There are maybe sometime for some material there can be 10, 15 agents, different type of agents, okay, and uh, there are hundreds of agents for all kinds of materials, okay, and each agent uh, serve a certain purpose, okay. It may reveal your grain boundary, it may reveal your different phase. If there are two, three different type of phases in the microstructure, it will reveal all these phases uh, in, in different way, maybe sometime different colors. Okay. Now, right now the, uh, the problem with this particular lecture which I am taking is I am using lot of uh, terms here which are not still you are not familiar with that. For example, grain boundary or uh, phases. Okay. So, right now you bear with me, uh, because those will be covered in the subsequent lectures. Okay. And ad advantage you have is that all these are video lectures, so I, you can always go back to the this particular lecture later on. Okay. So, that when we cover the phases, grain boundary, grain boundary and so on. When you get familiarized with that, you can again come back to this particular lecture okay, to see that what we were trying to tell you. Okay. Because a, a, any sequence I take, something will be missing in that particular uh, lecture. Okay. So, you can always go back and forth to uh, clarify your concepts. Okay. So, for uh, if I want to have uh, some uh, I want to see some features in, for example, a steel sample, a sample of a steel. Okay, then uh, I can use a agent, very popular agent, which is called two percent nitrile. Okay, so it contains some HNO3, two percent HNO3, and ninety-eight percent methanol or ethanol. Usually, the uh, handbook says that we should use ethanol. Okay, but use of ethanol is kind of uh, uh, not allowed, you have to have a license to deal with ethanol. Okay. So, usually in India we use methanol instead of ethanol. For aluminum alloys, uh, Keller's reagent is there, one of the popular one, there are uh, others also. Okay. I am just taking here as an example some agents. Okay. Uh, you have to also understand this that polishing or metallography or preparing sample for uh, seeing microstructure is kind of a uh, you can say art. Okay. It takes time, it takes time to understand that how you do polishing. Uh, just uh, if I want to tell a story uh, initially when I was uh, doing, P when I was uh, start, uh, when I started my PhD, it took me 3 months okay, to get a very good microstructure in the aluminum lithium alloy in which I was working. Okay. 
I was uh, struggling with the polishing and then I was doing etching, okay. I was doing one thing wrong in that, okay, which uh, an, a friend of mine told me that you, you instead of immersing the sample in the agent, okay, in the, that chemical, for example, here it is nitile, in case of aluminum, I was using kalers, okay, so instead of immersing it, you just swab it with a cotton. So, you take a cotton, dip it in the agent and just swab it like this, okay. And what I was struggling for last three months, I could get in like uh, half an hour, okay. So, my point is that sometime you have to, whatever is given in the handbook or somebody is telling, you also have to try different things. Maybe immersing may give you the microstructure, maybe swabbing will give you the microstructure, okay. Maybe slightly changing the, uh, the composition may give you a good microstructure, maybe you want to modify the scalars reagent, you are allowed to do that, okay. These are not agents or composition set in stone, okay. You are allowed to play with it, okay. But after getting whatever uh, sample you are working on, you should be able to understand the microstructure, okay. It should not happen that something you are getting, you are not able to then explain what you are seeing there, okay. Uh, similarly, with steel also you can work with so many agents are available there. So, do not get fixated with one agent or one procedure, okay. When you are not getting a good microstructure or not uh, able to reveal the all the features, try different things, okay. Try maybe changing uh, slightly the agent, the way you do etching and so on, okay. And you will get uh, definitely get the microstructure. Okay, and that is one of the beautiful feeling when you see the microstructure in the microscope for your material, okay. Now this, how we see the microstructure, okay, how uh, microscope is able to capture all these uh, uh, features in the sample, okay. For example, if I take sample just polished like the technique I was telling you, I have an optically flat surface which is has a mirror finish, okay, and my rays are coming from the objective, what will happen? It will get, uh, it will uh, reflect and again go back into objective, okay. So, the ray and uh, because this surface is at 90 degree to the rays coming, it will again go back into the same path. So, the ray which is coming like this, it will again be, get, will be reflected back into the objective and so on, okay. So, if I take just a polished sample, I will not see anything on the uh, on the sample, on the surface of the sample. I will not see anything in the microscope, okay. It will only be a, a kind of, a, if it is a good polished surface, you will only see a even uh, brightness from every part of the sample, okay. But suppose I have a, my, a sample which has a microstructure which has two phases, for example, okay. So, what this agent does as you can see in this particular slide here, okay, you have one phase which is here, another phase which is here, then again same this phase is again repeating here, okay. You can see this phase has reacted with the agent, okay. And by reacting what has happened, it has got this roughness on the surface because etching when it reacts, it is not a uniform process, it may give us some kind of roughness on the surface, okay. This phase, okay, it, it, it is, it, it is maybe inert to that particular agent, it has not reacted with that agent, okay. Again, this phase when it is repeated here, again it has reacted and you can see the roughness on the sample, okay. So, now what will happen? My rays are coming from the objective in the case of the phase which has not reacted, the light will come and go back into the objective. So, I will see because I am now getting a reflected light, I will see that that part is looking bright. The another phase which is which reacted with the agent and has this kind of roughness, okay, the light from the, the rays from the objective is coming and because of roughness, the rays are getting reflected all over the place, okay. They are not going back into the objective, okay. And because it is going all over the place, okay, and I am not seeing any reflected light back in the objective in the microscope, okay, I will see this particular phase is dark, okay. So, now what will happen? The phase which has not reacted will look bright, 
the phase which has reacted will look dark ok and that is how I will be able to see a microstructure like this which is shown here ok that one phase is dark, one phase is bright and so on ok. So, this is a two phase microstructure I will be able to see that what is the uh, how the two phases are distributed in the microstructure, what is their size and so on ok. Let us say if there is no this is not a material with two phase only single phase is there ok. So, now th th there is no two phase here. Again when you your sample reacts with the H end ok the grain boundary are uh, high energy sites we will see that when we cover the grain boundary part ok and they will react more vigorously with the H end than the grain ok. So, what will happen the grain where the grain boundary is because of this surface tension also and because this is reacted with the H end ok you will get a, a, a curvature like this ok. So, now when the light is rays are coming from the objective the where the grain is there where the flat surface is there it will be reflected back into the microscope and where the lights are interacting with this curved surface it will re get reflected in these different directions. So, this will uh, appear dark this will appear bright ok and that is what you will see in the microstructure you have grains you have grain boundaries and so on ok. The source is also given from which I have taken this particular figure ok. So, this is how image formation takes place in the microscope ok. Now, just let me quickly tell you that how uh, you can use the microscope ok. So, uh, as we in the previous lecture we saw the whole optical system ok. I just wanted to show you the actual microscope and how this optical system or different parts of the uh, microscope are there ok. So, we, we have a light source here ok from which the uh, the light visible light will be coming ok. It will go through different filters here you can insert filter or you can remove it is up to you ok. Then there somewhere here it will have uh, that half silver mirror ok and then the light will go through objective and it will be falling on the sample ok and then it gets reflect it will be reflected back ok. So, depending upon the feature on the sample it will either reflect back or may not ok. So, according to that you will see either a bright uh, feature or a dark feature ok. So, let me just tell you that how I will like to use a microscope ok. Some precautions are there ok and after the light goes through the objective it will come into the eyepiece and you can see the microstructure. Okay. So, when you prepare the sample you polish the sample then you will do the etching ok. After etching always remember to do a very thorough washing of your sample in a running water ok. The idea is because all the etchants have acids ok. So, if it rem uh, acid remains on the sample you bring it here it will also react with your sample and the fumes of acid may also uh, damage your optical system the lenses and so on ok. So, do a thorough washing ok dry it in a air blower not your hair dryers ok. Air blower is a blower which gives a give air at a very high velocity. So, just put it in front of that. So, it will physically remove all the water from the surface ok and dry your hands also and then you come to the microscope. So, microscope there are uh, some adjustments here you can see this is a, a coarse adjustment ok and in a smaller knob has a fine adjustment ok. And this is a stage where you will keep the sample it also moves. So, you have a x and y uh, variation so that I can watch the sample if I want to measure certain feature on the sample I can do that measurement also because there is a vernier scale on the stage ok. So, first I will what I will do there are three objective on this turret ok. So, I will always start with the uh, the lowest uh, magnification objective. So, right now it is 10 x here ok and then I will place the sample here which is dried completely ok and first I will do the focusing using the 
course uh, setting okay so that i can quickly find out where my focus for this sample is there okay and once i find out that okay then i don't have to touch my uh, course adjustment anymore because other uh, when i go to higher magnification only a fine adjustment will bring the uh, image into focus okay the reason why i am saying that don't touch uh, course uh, adjustment after uh, you have uh, done focusing at a lower magnification is because you can see that the next one is 20x and this final one is 50x okay so if i can if you may be able to show uh, see it in the this particular video that in this case my working distance is suppose here okay very close to the sample whereas in the course one the working distance is for 10x it, it is very far you have, you can see that there is a distance more distance between the sample and the and the and the lens okay so when uh, why we avoid using course uh, uh, adjustment for uh, high magnification lenses is because working distance is very small and your sample may touch the lens okay and in the process may damage the lens and which we don't want okay so do a course adjustment of focus at lower magnification okay and after that you just use the fine adjustment to do focusing at higher magnification lens so start with the lowest one and then you can change go to uh, 20x for example here and then you can go to 50x and so on okay and uh, you will see a very nice microstructure going from one uh, one magnification to the next okay so i think that's a, a, a small uh, uh, demo of a microscope how to use it how to take care of it and always uh, cover the microscope when it is not in use because the dust gets collected on the lenses okay and sometime there is a fungus a fungal growth also on, on that dust okay and we should not we don't want that so for a microscope the optic uh, lens is the heart of the microscope and we should take care of that thank you